You're going to set the charge at 5 p.m., right? Right. Yeah, and I tell you, this isn't the only thing that's going to blow. Uh, uh, what do you mean? Some cops, too. Uh, one cop, anyway. They're going to have to scrape him up with a spoon. Freeze! <laughs> My name is Joe Cleaver. For 14 years, I've been partnered with the man on my left here, Bill Bundy. We never had a secret from each other until now. This good-looking kid on my right, a rookie cop called Haven, he's the secret. He looks human, talks and acts human, but he's not. He's an android, a robot, the perfect cop, the cop of the future, a future cop. Ta-da! Uh, there is a 61% probability, therefore, the location is Santa Monica Municipal. How could he know all of that? Man, that's the fastest white boy I've ever seen. Yeah, I know. <laughs> A special ABC Friday Night Movie presentation. Officer, please, the old lady is going to burn down the entire apartment building. She's crazy. All right, Mr. Uh, Cabe. Walter Cabe. OK, Walter, fill this out and take it down the hall to the watch commander's office. Watch commander. OK. What's the matter, kid? The room is 2.7 lumens brighter. What? The front windows have been washed. Oh. Come on, kid. Where's St. Sam? Hi, Cleve. Uh, make sure the car's gas, will you, kid? Uh, yes, sir. Good morning, Officer Bundy. Good morning, kid. Oh, I checked the oil. Uh, yes, sir. No, Joe, sometimes you talk to that kid like he's a servant. Servant? Come on, he likes it. No, nobody likes it. Not even a rookie. You don't understand. Him and me, we got a... a special kind of thing going. <laughs> anyway, I thought you didn't like him. Uh, just because I ain't crazy about him, that don't mean I want to see anybody treated bad. You ain't crazy about him, but... Uh, <laughs> still uh, kind of growing on you, huh, kid? <laughs> mm. I'd you like to see a dozen of him hanging around? Mm-mm. <laughs> Oh, waltz me again, home oh, mother. All right, and there's one additional item, a bomb threat. Free Inez Franzia, then hope the bomb does not kill you. Probably a crank. Why do you say it's probably a crank, Lieutenant? 
Well, about six years ago, four terrorists accidentally blew themselves up. One of them was Inez Francia. Have a good day, man. <laughs> Dear friend, now you want the Lakers, you've got to give me six points. Four, five. Joe, do you understand why the odds makers give points? No, why? It's to make the bets more even. Oh. It's like a handicap, you know? Uh -huh. I see the Lakers are actually only two points better, maybe, but because you're a friend uh -huh. and an old friend. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm giving you four and a half. Four and a half? Mm -hmm. mm. What do you think, kid? Uh, the Lakers center whose ankle was injured is now fully recovered. Uh, therefore... Hey, wait a minute. Joe, how come you're always asking him what to do? Oh, you see, because he keeps up on these things. You see, Bundy, old boy? Besides, he always knows I'm getting suckered in, too. <laughs> All Thanks, <right>. kid. <laughs> okay, you don't want to bet the point spread? We'll make it a straight bet. Mm. I'll give you, uh, three to two. Kid? Uh, that is a fair wager, sir. Uh, thank you, Jimmy the Greek. Your advisor says that that is a fair wager. Actually, the odds should be 3.633 to 2, sir. However, since in that particular Laker contest there are considerable variables, I would say that 3 to 2 is acceptable. How'd you ever get along without him, Joe? You know, sometimes I really wonder. <laughs> <laughs> No, sir, there's no delivery till 12.30. We're going to run from 12 to 12.30. That's the house rule. It's not my fault. You want to call the boss? Call the boss. I'm not trying to be a wise guy, mister. I'll be right with you in a second. Four TVs, North American security. Four. One, two, three, four. They're all there. You see something, kid? A male Caucasian, six feet, approximately 180 pounds, uh, no other distinguishing features. The subject was removing a carton from the van, transferring it to the pickup truck. You saw all that? Come on, let's back it down. All right, look. The kid and me will go in from this side. You take it around the other side. All right? Hold it. Let's go, kid. ripped off my equipment.
I wonder, I wonder where that kid went to. I sure wonder where that kid went to. Stay in there, kid. You'll save the city a lot of money. No, thanks. <coughs> I'll take a free ride downtown instead. Here, yeah. read it. You have the right to remain silent. If you give up the right to remain silent. <laughs> Uh, yes, sir. Boy, you must be made out of iron. Uh, yes, sir, about 20%. Come on, you. Hey, good work, partner. I bet you the guy they ripped off would be glad to see us, huh? Yeah, there's only one problem. Huh? He didn't stick around to thank us. I suppose he sent that nutty note to the cops. Well, that's the idea, isn't it? Let the public think they're dealing with a lunatic? Well, they are, and so are we. Oh, come on, Ross. If it wasn't for that nut, you'd be retiring on a CPO's pension and looking for a night watchman's job somewhere, instead of looking forward to buying that real estate in Hawaii. <laughs> and you'd be having to any up for your company for all the money you borrowed on your two favorite hobbies, fast women, slow horses. Then we both should be grateful Yancey entered our lives when he did. You ever stop to think what Yancey will do when he finds out that Inez is really dead? Eh, by then it won't matter. He did pick up the supplies from you today, didn't he? Well, I got him everything that he needed. It wasn't easy. Uh, making two million dollars is never easy. <laughs> what about the chopper? Oh, it'll be ready Thursday, as promised. They're finishing the paint job. You wouldn't recognize it from a real police chopper. Yeah, come on in, Cliff. <clears throat> Yancey. Hello, Wheeler. I'll talk to you later, Brad. What's on your mind? Uh, while I was delivering the new equipment to Sheldon, somebody ripped off three TV monitors right out of the back of the van. Oh, what do you mean, ripped off? They were stolen? Yeah, yeah. I didn't stick around to see what happened. I mean, the last thing I want is a conversation with the cops. All right, take it easy. No problem. If they catch the thieves, we'll get back the equipment. If not, we're heavily insured. It's all right. Don't worry about it. What else? The timing devices that Wheeler got me were hidden inside one of the monitors. All right, there's still no problem. I don't see any reason for the police to look inside the equipment. I'll tell you what, you make a call, report the theft, make it look good. I don't want to talk to the cops. Why not? I was in the station house this morning, and I had a word or two with the desk sergeant. What were you doing at the police station? I set the bomb there. But you said it would be the post office. Well, I changed my mind. The cops are the ones that have Inez behind bars, and they're the ones that have got to let her out. Cliff. And now they'll know we mean business. We're trying to get your girl out of jail. We had it all planned. It was a well-thought-out timetable. Now, what time did you set it for? Just in time for the new shift. It'll blow in exactly two minutes and two seconds. Hey, kid. Get somebody to give you a hand with those TV sets, will you? Take them up to the stolen property department. I can handle it, sir. All right. Hey, Bill. Huh? Let's get something to eat, huh? I'm starved. Ah, uh, you're always starved. I'll tell you what. What? 
June made me a couple of meatloaf sandwiches. Ooh. Now, you get them out of my locker, and I'll share them with you. <laughs> well, you start the booking. My dear sir, your wife is no great judge of men, but she sure makes one great meatloaf. <laughs> I shall return. Yes, sir. <laughs> start the booking. Hey. Sandwiches that Bill's wife makes. That's grand larceny. Mm. <laughs> Anybody smell what I smell? supposed to be funny. <coughs> this just came. <coughs> Three Inez. The next time you cops will get the real thing. Well, who was it that got in there planet? Who knows? <coughs> Don't this bother you at all? <coughs> uh, FES plus H2SO4 yields FESO4. Huh? Uh, iron sulfide plus sulfuric acid creates iron sulfate. Uh, plus H2S, hydrogen sulfide, type of gas. Uh, no, sir, it has no effect on me, whatever. I suspect, however, that it must be quite unpleasant. I'll go inside and remove it, sir. And, uh, well, now, uh, uh, kid, you be careful. Boy, that kid's got guts. <coughs> Unending resources. I can't keep giving the kid everything. No, I can't. Hold it, hold it, Jigman. Yeah. Okay, all right, okay, Brad. I'll get him another time. But please, for God's sakes, no more police stations. He's agreed to go along with us. The post office? Uh, no, he's changed his mind again. He wants to do the forum. The what? The forum? The forum, Ross. During the game. You see, kid? The place is filled with nuts. Before you know it, they pop out of the woodwork at you. Well, why do you always talk to this kid like he just jumped out of a camp? He's... How old are you anyway, kid? Oh, lay off him, will you, Bill? What do you mean, lay off him? All I did was ask him how old he is. He's old enough. Yeah, look at that. Huh? Speaking of nuts, they'll be out again by morning. Ah, <laughs> oh, boy. We've got the evidence, and we can't find a victim to sign a complaint. Hey, Bill, are you sure you didn't see any I identification on that uh, blue van? I looked it over good, Joe. I didn't see nothing. How about you, kid? You see anything? No, sir. I see he ain't so smart. Now, let's review the whole thing. Kid, I'll bet you don't even know who planted that stink bomb. Uh, no, sir, I don't know his or her identity. But there's an 84% probability that he or she is a psychotic personality. What? What's he saying, Joe? Well, you're the one asking him questions. Ask him. Uh, what are you saying, kid? A psychotic personality derives gratification from challenging authority, i.e., in this case, the police. They attempt to prove they are cleverer than and able to outwit authority. The note sent by the bomber was an anagram. It revealed the target location. It told where the bomb was? Uh, yes, sir. Free Inez Franzia, then hope the bomb does not kill you. The first letter of the first five words spell F-I-F-T-H, fifth. Fifth station, Southeast Division. He ain't real. He just ain't real. 
If you're so smart, how come you didn't glom the license plate number on that van, huh? I did, sir. 1E49901. Hold it. It's 1 franc 5, 1 franc 5. Request a department motor vehicle on California license number 1 Edward 4, 9 or 9 or 01. How can you remember all of that? I have an infallible memory, sir. 1 franc 5, 1 Edward 4, 9 or 9 or 01 is a 1976 blue van issued to North American Security System 243 Terminal Drive. Roger. Come on, let's go. I was told about it just a few minutes ago. You sure you boys wouldn't like a little? Hmm. Thanks a lot. We're on duty. But you mean to say that the driver didn't know that he was missing anything until he got back here, Mr. Bennick? Well, you see, this particular guy happens to be one of my top installation men, you know, and uh, he's uh, almost an electronic genius. But that's all he cares about. He could be working on a systems install, and the whole place could be falling down around his ears. He wouldn't notice it. <laughs> yeah, good help is hard to find. Now, the important thing is that we know that the sets belong to you. Uh, you can make positive identification, can't you? Well, I'll know the serial numbers as soon as I can check them out with the ones left in the van. Hey, great. All we need for you to do now is to come down and sign a complaint. Uh, no, thank you. Forget it. Um, what do you mean, forget it? Gentlemen, I've been through this before. If I sign a complaint, they'll keep the sets as evidence until the trial. Now, that could take months. Now, I have a lot of customers waiting for security systems all over town. I can't afford to have them tied up that long. Yeah, but, sir, without your complaint, we got no case. No, I can't do it. No way. Now, if you'll just tell me when I can pick up my merchandise. But, Mr. Bannon. No, don't knock yourself out, Joe. What we got here is one of those concerned citizens. Next time he gets ripped off, he'll scream his lungs out about police inefficiency. Well, your sets can be claimed at the stolen property department, sir. Eight to five. Any day. Let's go, Joe. Boy, that's great. We bake our back collar and thieves, or we have to let them go because the witness won't let us use the evidence. And he said it happened before. <laughs> yeah, it happened before, huh? Hey, when we get back, kid, you do a run-through on that guy Bannock, will you? Uh, yes, sir. Hmm. Yes, sir, I've already correlated some information on that. Uh, there's a 26.4% probability that Mr. Bannock filed a missing property claim early this morning. Before they were stolen? Uh, sir, the probability is in the lower range, but the possibility cannot be discounted. A man, presumably in Mr. Bannock's employ, was at the police station this morning. Well, how do you know that, kid? Well, I observed him, sir, at both locations, a at the station and on the TV monitors in Mr. Bannock's office. Oh? Hey, what is this? This kid sees all, hears all, knows all? What was the guy doing at the station, kid? Yeah, he was addressing the desk sergeant. He was uh, somewhat agitated. You know what he's talking about, Joe? What else, kid? When I was transferring the three cartons from the patrol car to the stolen property department, I noted that one carton was 2.8 kilograms heavier than the other two. Now... Oh, OK, OK, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hey, what if there is a connection between Bannock and those warehouse crooks, huh? It's not hard enough being a cop, huh? You and this rookie have to make it harder. Kid, you put it all together, then you sit down and write out a nice little report. We'll go down and check with that desk sergeant about the guy that you saw at the station this morning, OK? Yes, sir. Let's go. Nothing from security systems. Uh, the only complaint around the time you're talking about is from Walter Key. Oh? This is landlady's about to burn down her own apartment building. You check it out, Tom? Check it out. Hey, Cleaver. You know how many nuts walk into this station every day? <laughs> yeah, most of them work here. Hmm. Well, thanks, Tom. Thanks, Ethan. Joe, did it ever occur to you that maybe the kid is wrong? Listen, if the kid tells you he saw something, he saw it. <laughs>
This report your rookie turned in last night. What's your opinion, Cleaver? Uh, well, uh, I haven't read it yet, sir. Uh, you see, I just came on duty. Uh, but I bet it's a good one, right, sir? Cleaver, is he in proper working order? Huh? Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, kid, you want to wait outside? Uh, yes, sir. Hold it. He can stay. Well, Captain, if we're going to talk about him, uh, the least we can do is not talk in front of him. Why not? He afraid of hurting his feelings? Cleaver, he doesn't have any feelings. Oh. Yes, sir. I, I see what you mean. Uh, sit down, kid. Yeah, thank you, sir. To begin with, he seems to be fascinated with uh, an executive of the North American security systems named Bannock, who apparently has some financial problems. A couple of months ago, he was beat up by known loan shark collectors. He refused to press charges. Uh, yes, sir. Well, Bannock doesn't like to make complaints. But more important, Haven says he knows who planted the nausea bomb. Oh? Is that right, kid? Yeah, no, sir. Now, what the report states, sir, is that the man I saw here at the station and a security system employee are one and the same. And since one of the stolen TV monitors contained a U.S. Navy issue electronic detonating device, and since the man in question must have surely used a false name, there is an 84.2% probability that this individual placed the nauseous device. And sent the note? Now, that probability is 97%, sir. You see? 97, sir. Well, I try to check out the sets, but... The man from the security system claimed him last night. Aha. Uh -huh. Then it all fits. What fits? What? Well, uh, Captain, I think you should know this, that um, when the kids saw that, that bomb threat note, well, he figured out where it was planted. I mean, he used one of them, uh, what do you call a kid? An anagram, sir. Yeah, one of them things. You know, like a crossword puzzle? You knew where it was? Uh, yes, sir. He knew where it was, but he didn't tell anyone. Because nobody asked him. Well, you got to remember, Captain, that the kid won't give out any information and, unless somebody asks for it. <laughs> Isn't that right, kid? Uh, yes, sir. This just arrived. You free Inez, or I really blow up something major. All right. Now, Haven, please note that I am asking can you decode this one? Yeah, using the same acronymic code, sir, the first letters of each word spell nothing. However, since this is the second note, the first letter of the second word and each second word thereafter spell F-O-R-U-M. Forum. The Forum. He's planted a bomb at the Forum. Is there a game there tonight? Yeah, yes, sir. The Kings versus the Boston Bruins. Is that something, Captain? I? Is that kid something? <laughs> Get me the commander of the bomb squad. Cleaver, I'm about to order the forum evacuated. Now, that means closing down the game and kicking 17,000 people out. 17,000. On his say-so. Well, but you don't have to worry, Captain. He's, he's never wrong. <laughs> Well, hardly never.
Skaggs here. <laughs> in one hour and 35 minutes. Inez is going to be very proud of you, Cliff. Yeah, it's her style, all right. Now, you've set everything up with your contacts in Havana, right? Oh, yeah. Inez will be picked up at the prison and driven straight to the airport. And then she and Cliff are flying off to Havana. <laughs> You'll get a hero's welcome, probably even a medal, kid. Yeah, well, that's something I gotta discuss with Inez. If I know her, she'll want me to stay here and continue the struggle. Oh, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's between you and her. I mean, right now, let's concentrate on the timetable, right? All right, first the forum tonight, huh? And then uh, your idea of planting the stink bomb, that was a beautiful stroke of genius, Yancey, beautiful. Now they know that you mean business. When you say, baby, that you're gonna blow up that bridge on Thursday, they're gonna believe you. And they're gonna free Inez to save it. And then you and Inez are flying off together into a happy reunion. Does it make good sense? Uh, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Good. Brad. All right, you two, uh, get out the back. And stay away from the cameras. Yes, come in. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, we're sorry to uh, disturb you again, sir. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, too, gentlemen, because I still haven't changed my mind. Oh, we're sure of that, Mr. Bannock. Mm. Uh, sir, we were just wondering if you could possibly give us the name of the man who had the TV set stolen from him. Excuse me, gentlemen, let me check the invoices, huh? Let's see. Here it is. Um... Yancey, Clifford Yancey. Yancey? Are you sure it wasn't Walter Cabe? His name is Clifford Yancey. Well, what's this all about? Well, could we see him, please? Oh, I don't know if he's back yet. He's been out on a job. Uh, what's he done? We'd just like to talk to him. Well, I'll have to go out and check the uh, loading dock. That's where the fellas hang out. Look, fellas, uh, make yourselves at home. Have a drink or something. Uh, Thank you, sir. I'll be right back. Well, you can't say the guy's not cooperating. Uh-huh. You're absolutely sure they wouldn't recognize you? Of course. My own mother wouldn't have recognized you. She wouldn't want to. Now, you shut up. I've had enough of your ignorant wisecracks, man. Brad, I'm not going to be able to take much more from this clown. That dumb trick. Shut up, both of you. I worked too long and too hard for the payoff. Payoff? What payoff? Uh, the payoff, Cliff. Uh, getting your girlfriend out of jail. The payoff. <sighs> Look, if you don't talk to them now, they'll turn the whole city upside down until they do. Now, what do you say? We go in there and find out what they want, okay? Sure. Good boy. Come on. What are you looking at, kid? Is that him? At the station, he wore a blue stocking cap, false mustache, and dark glasses, but the facial characteristics and skeletal structure are the same. Incidentally, sir, these same characteristics are as infallible as fingerprints for the purposes of identification. They skipped the six o'clock news. Is that him or not? Watch it, watch it. Oh, I found them, gentlemen. This is Clifford Yancey. Mr. Yancey. Were you at the Southeast Division Police Station yesterday morning? Uh, no, I wasn't at the station yesterday or any other time. Is your real name Clifford Yancey? Sure. Well, now, hold on a minute. Are you making charges? No, no, no charges. And you've answered the questions. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Mr. Bennick. Again. My pleasure. Goodbye, Mr. Yancey. They recognize you at the police station. I don't know how, but they did. Something very strange about that young cop. Very strange. But I can see they couldn't prove it. They're stuck. Huh? No, 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 they'll never prove it. I told you that. Now, look, Brad, I want to move the timetable up. I want Inez out tomorrow. Uh, Thursday, Cliff. It's all arranged for Thursday, so just relax. Okay, okay, all right. But instead, instead of the bridge, I want to do Brighton Hospital. 
Then it's some irony, right? Hospital, Brighton Hospital. Do you know what that means? Hospital means insane asylum. <laughs> Hospital. It'd be something to see that dump go up. They kept me in that place for six years. Six years. You wouldn't have lasted six days. <laughs> Wait till I tell Inez. She'll love it. Cliff, 15 minutes. The forum goes up in 15 minutes. Not the forum. Not the forum. Pauly. Pauly Pavilion. Kid, what was it you said about the face? You know, that, that the ske skeletal... Skeletal structure, sir. That's it. The technique uh, developed by Alphonse Bertignon was first adopted by the French police in 1888. This preceded our present fingerprint identification system, which was primarily developed by Sir Francis Galton. Ah, I, I get it. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's just hope that uh, Captain Skaggs does too. You better just hope that Skaggs empties the forum in time. Well, excuse mm. me, sir, but evacuating the forum was unnecessary. Huh? Uh, kid, uh, are you all right? Oh, I'm just fine. Thank you very much, sir. No, no, no. I mean about the evacuation. Well, what do you mean? Oh, I've reevaluated my initial conclusion regarding the bomber's anagram note and have determined that the forum will not be tonight's target. You reevaluate? You had him empty the place. And now you say it's not the target? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, that is correct. Oh, you, you're just joking. <laughs> That's it. You're just joking. <laughs> no, sir. I don't make jokes, sir. Cleaver? Well, now, kid, look, uh, you tell it to us in your own words. Go, go ahead, uh, you, you start. Uh, thank you, sir. A reevaluation of the bomber's message revealed the existence of certain other anagrammatic letters within the text. After discarding all possible combinations of these letters, the only possible grouping spelled P A W L E Y. P A W L E Y. Paulie. Not the forum? Yes, sir, Paulie. Pauly Pavilion. That's where they're having a basketball game tonight. And there's a 76% probability that it won't be a bomb, sir, uh, based on its past action. Cleaver, if you listen to him twice, you're out of your tree. Yeah, but supposing he's right this time. With his track record? Come on. Kid, are you sure? Well, 93%, sir. Let's get back to the car. I think I'm going to be sick. Uh, this is one franc five, one franc five. Madeline, will you please put me through to Captain Skaggs? Please, honey. Stand by. South entrance. Collins, north entrance. Inside, check all the restrooms. We blacked it out. We blacked out the whole place. Not only that, the whole west side of town. It's all black. Captain? No bombs, huh, Captain? Bundy, go help with crowd control. Yes, sir. Officer Haven. Give me your gun and holster and your badge, please. Oh, Captain. Can you hear me, Haven? Yes, sir.
thank you. Now, please take him back to the laboratory. But, Captain, Haven knows who's doing all this. Cleaver, he's had us cancel a hockey game, evacuate some 17,000 people, and then made even bigger fools of us over here. I'm afraid he's an experiment whose time has not yet come. You're wrong, Captain. You're wrong. I'm retiring him, Cleaver, retiring him. And in his case, I hope that means they turn him into a couple dozen portable radios. Sir, my procedural display is flashing zero plus. It indicates a series of improper actions on my part. This time, I think you're right, kid. Come on, get in the car. Radios. been out. It's been out ever since I turned it off. That's what you're supposed to be in here fixing. That's the unit there. Take it back to the shop, repair it, and return it. There. You're not telling me that's not enough. Well, for the bridge, sure, but I'm doing Brighton Hospital, too. Didn't Bannock tell you? Oh, yeah. Man, I'm getting a real bad feeling about all of this. I don't trust you, and I don't trust Bannock either. Nothing's happening. There hasn't been one word about me in the papers. That's because the police are hushing it up. They don't dare let this thing out. Wheeler, you're a liar. And what's more, you don't care what the fascist secret police are doing in this country. And speaking of secret police, they're up to something at the Synthetronics lab. I don't know what it is yet, but I'll find out. Now, get Bannock on the phone. I want to talk to him. He's not in his office. I tried to get him just a while ago. Well, where is he? He's making arrangements for Inez's flight. Well, we take off at uh, 4.15, arrive at the, uh, at the bridge area at 4.30, where we'll join the rest of the police choppers. And by then, there'll be uh, half a dozen flying around. Now, the armored truck will pull up in front of the payroll building at 4.50. When Wheeler gives us the signal, 
We'll casually leave the bridge area, fly over the base, and down. Now, we suddenly pop up in front of the armored truck where the drivers will see a police chopper, three guys in SWAT uniforms, and they'll give us a big hello. And we'll give them a big goodbye. fool me. Now I'm going to destroy you. I'll put it right next to your, uh, your heart. It won't interfere with your own circuitry too much. Besides, it won't make any difference after tomorrow anyway. I'm wiring you into the bridge detonator. When that goes, you go. You're a walking time bomb, officer. farmer whose best mule just died. I know what it is. It's that kid, ain't it? You feel bad about him because you feel responsible for him, don't you? Me? Why should I feel responsible? Well, you're the one that's always saying how much you like him. <laughs> like him? As far as I'm concerned, he's just another dumb rookie. Better off where he's at anyway. Oh, yeah? Where's that? Uh, he's, uh... They put him in a police academy uh, for a refresher course. <laughs> Back to the drawing board, huh? <laughs> yeah. Hey, you want to come for dinner tonight? We're having meatloaf again. Uh, no, thanks. I, I've got some things to do. Oh, yeah, like what things? The errands, you know, those kind of things. Yeah. Well, you change your mind. Come on over. I'll tell June. Yeah, say hello for me, will you? Yeah, right. Pingley said she was going to be out of town for a couple of days, uh, uh, but she didn't say how long. Uh, uh, do you have any idea when she'll be back? Uh, she'll be back day after tomorrow. The day after tomorrow, huh? Okay. Uh, thanks.
kid? Observation, sir, but nothing has been removed. Oh, yeah? Uh, everything okay? Yes, sir. Oh, good, good. Well, listen, this came this afternoon, the station house, and I copied it down. Here, read it. You are pouring oil on troubled waters unless Inez is free. Thursday is the deadline. Hey, what do you make out of that, kid? Uh, there is no anagrammatic content, sir. Other than the obvious reference to oil and the Thursday deadline, the message has no meaning. Uh, that is an absolute conclusion, sir. But it has to have a meaning. Uh, sir, I've assembled all the known facts and variables and have arrived at a probability. May I disclose it, sir? Well, yeah, sure, go ahead. Uh, the pattern of incident, sir, indicates there is no intent, to date at least, to injure or kill. There is a 64.7% probability, therefore, that the bomber's purpose is to confuse or divert. Divert? Divert what? Uh, from what, sir? I'm unable to answer that question at this time. From what? You mean this is a kind of a smoke screen or something? Uh, yes, sir. Listen, kid, can you get up out of this thing? Uh, please activate locomotion circuit, sir. Locomotion? Um, no. Locomotion. Ah. Like a morgue. A morgue? What's that, sir? Oh, nothing. Forget it, kid. It's nice seeing you again, sir. Yeah, good seeing you. <laughs> now, listen, kid. Getting back to that guy, we're going to find out what this weirdo's up to and why. You understand? Uh, yes, sir. All right, come on. Let's get your hat. What, what, what's wrong? Yeah, why nothing, sir? Aren't we leaving? Are you sure they didn't... Uh... I see you're spending your time doing something constructive, eh? Thank you, sir. Now, but, sir, could you explain this film? Exactly what are these men attempting to achieve? Well, uh, you see those guys on the right, uh, they're the good guys. And uh, those fellas on the left, they're the bad guys. And, uh... Yeah, I don't... I don't remember seeing this. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? I only got a couple of minutes. I told Bundy I was going to the cleaners. Here, I brought you some new stuff on uh, Inez Franzia. Now, this material, sir, uh, coupled with your previously supplied data, confirms my initial conclusion. Yeah, which is what, kid? The newspaper account states that all four bodies were found. But this man was not one of them. Walter Veerman. Yeah, I remember him. Demolitions expert, Vietnam hit. What do you mean he wasn't one of them? There were four people in a building, and there were four bodies. Excuse me, sir, but there must have been five people in the building. Five? Uh, yes, sir. I drew this from my recollection of Yancey's face stored in my memory bank. Please observe, sir. Holy jumping Hannah. Yancey. Yancey is Walter Veerman? Uh, yes, sir. But then he's got to know that Inez is dead. Uh, yes, sir, it would seem so. Well, then if he knows that Inez is dead, why is he trying to scare everybody into freeing her? Huh. Or 
maybe he doesn't know she's dead. Or maybe somebody's making him believe that she's still alive. That's it, isn't it, kid? I'm sure of it. That conclusion shows an 80% affirmative, sir. Aha! I knew it. Oh, you could bet on it. And you were right, too, kid. Yeah, all that baloney on the notes and the bombs has to be a diversion, right? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Mm. Thank you. Yancey, huh? Yancey and Bannock? Hey, kid, you just sit tight. I want to see what our friend Bannock is up to. Yes, sir. Huh? Uh, why is one group trying to kill the other? It's called war, and that's what they do in a war. Uh, yes, sir, but why must they kill each other to resolve their differences? I guess, kid, it's because we're human. That's one of the things we do best. No mistake. Good. The disbursement office just took receipt of the money. It's to be transferred on schedule. Thursday, 5 p.m. All right. Now, Yancey sets the bridge for 5 p.m. We call the police a half hour before. There'll be so much confusion and running around on that bridge, we'll probably be able to steal the whole naval station before anybody could notice it. It's a damn Yancey. Ross, what are you saying? He's our key, our free pass. A mental patient that I gave a job to. And what does he do with that job? Engineers a $2 million heist. Suppose the police don't buy it. Suppose they start digging. Ross, the only place they're going to be able to dig is Yancey's grave. Joe, what are we sitting here for? We are sitting here waiting for a pigeon to fly by. I'll cool it, will you? Hey, maybe that's what we've been waiting for. A Navy chief. He even said that that detonator was Navy issue. You know, it could fit. The only thing that fits is you getting an early involuntary retirement. That's what fits. Yeah. Well, let's just see where this guy goes. That chief just went through. What's his name? Wheeler. Ross Wheeler. Is he in trouble? Hey, he will be if he doesn't learn how to stop at traffic lights. Now, what's he do? He's the head security honcho. Oh, Shaw Patrol, huh? No, he's with electronics. You know, TV cameras, stuff like that. You know, we handle a lot of money here. Payrolls, ships in and out of port, overseas bases, <laughs> things like that. Excuse me. Oh, right, sir. But I'll get... I got a very interesting word for you, partner. Yes, Payroll.
Yes. Captain Skaggs, please. Listen, Bill. We can crack this case and clear the kid at the same time. Joe, I'm off duty. I'm going home. Oh, come on, Bill. You know the kid got a bum rap. You know it. You know something? I'm sick and tired of hearing about this kid. All right, so he's a good kid. And maybe he did get a bum rap. But that ain't my worry. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. That's not your worry. Yes, sir. Your only worry is to put in your eight hours and then go on home, kick off your shoes, open up a can of beer, and watch television. That's your only worry. You're right. Hey, Joe, what's the matter with us? What's the matter with us? All of a sudden, this kid comes along and things are different. What's different about it? There's nothing different. Don't tell me things ain't different. We've been partners for 14 years. I know when things are different. Ah, things are different. What's the matter? You jealous of something? Oh, now, come on, man, jealous. Now you're starting to talk as goofy as that kid. Ah, uh, goofy. Cleaver, J.A. Cleaver, please report to Captain Skaggs. I just left. Wait a minute, Joe. You don't even know what he wants. And I ain't waiting to find J. out. J.A. Cleaver, report to Captain Skaggs immediately. He just left! You place a charge here, right? Oh, no, no, no. Now, look, this is a trust tight bridge. You can't just put a stick anywhere and expect to knock it down. Now, there are four junction boxes. Here, here here and here. We'll distribute 30 pounds among them. It'll do some nice damage. Won't destroy the thing, but it'll sure put it out of commission. Boy, you sure know your stuff, Cliff. Well, I should. I did three of these in Nam. Not as big as this one, but plenty big enough. Well, I'm glad you're on our side. I really am. Now, you're gonna set the charge at 5 p.m., right? Right. And uh, no changes. Right, no changes. But uh, what about the note? Well, I'll send a note uh, telling them that a hospital will be blown. I won't tell them what hospital or where. Then tomorrow afternoon at 4.30, I'll make a call and tell them that it won't be the hospital after all, but the Terminal Island Bridge at 5 o'clock. They'll have the whole police force out there searching for it. <laughs> yeah, and I tell you, this isn't the only thing that's going to blow. Uh, well, what do you mean? Some cops, too. Well, one cop, anyway. They're gonna have to scrape them up with a spoon. Being searched for bombs. The mayor says that whether or not the note is a hoax, it must be taken seriously, and the mad, mad bomber must be captured. Well, there it is, kid. Yes, sir. What do you make of it? The very vagueness of the threat confirms my initial evaluation, sir. A diversion. Yeah, but what? Where? Can't you run it through the machine again, kid? Sir, I simply do not have sufficient information for a conclusion. I'm sorry, sir. Well, what about the Navy? Don't you even get a reading on the Navy? Uh, no, sir. Hmm. Well, then we're just gonna have to get to Wheeler and find out. The Battle of Jutland was the greatest naval engagement the world had ever seen. The Battle of Jutland was the greatest naval engagement the world had ever seen. Huh? Sir? You did understand what I just said to you, didn't you, kid? Uh, yes, sir. I'm to get to Wheeler. Right. Excuse me, sir, but my procedural display readout indicates insufficient data. Huh? How do I get to Wheeler, sir? My boy, you're gonna join the Navy. That's how you're gonna see him. You're gonna join the Navy and see the world. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, it sure is good seeing you again, old partner. Good seeing you. Uh, but I want to tell you something. You know, the old Navy ain't what it used to be. It now, th this is what the old Navy used to be. I mean, iron ships with iron men. That's what it was all about. And remember the battles we used to get into with all those Marines when they used to call us swabbies? <laughs> remember that, Mac? <laughs> well, I remember. I had the finest set of bell bottoms in the fleet. And you weren't such a bad 13 buttonhole to yourself. Ah, you rascal, you. <laughs> I want to tell you. I used to know this man when he was just an apprentice seaman. And, why, he spent half his time at Captain's Mass. And the other half of the brig. <laughs> Son, I really can't tell you how pleased I am the old man got you to sign up for the reserves. You know, he's really following in your footsteps. The police force, now the Navy. A real chip off the old block, too. Uh, Haven uh, isn't really, uh, the, well, you see, uh, Listen, Mac, I want to thank you for everything that you've done, and, and we'll be talking to you, right? Why, well, sure will. Come Bye. on, kid, get in. Nice seeing you. See you, Mac. Be good.
and all that stuff, kid? Yeah, yes, sir. Because if there's anything you want to know, you know, just, just ask me. Oh, uh, well, sir, I've inculcated everything in this publication, but there is uh, one section of which I'm receiving N.A. flash in my display. Oh? What's uh, N.A.? Uh, not applicable. Uh, the material's being rejected, sir. What material is that? Uh, sexual orientation, sir. Uh, well, uh, just, just skip that part, kid. Uh, that's not important. Yes, sir. What do you think, kid? Uh, the trousers appear slightly long, and the jacket might be slightly loose. Perfect. That's exactly the way that GI issue's supposed to be. <laughs> now, listen, kid. I know you read all the books, but you got to go by one rule. Listen to this. If it wears gold, salute it. If they ask for volunteers, don't. You got it? Uh, yes, sir. Great. Got it, sir. Oh, oh, oh. One more thing, just so nobody will get wise, while you're talking to those sailors over there at the Navy base, you know what I mean? Use a lot of four-letter words, OK? Oh, hell yes. Mm. Uh, sir? Uh, get in the car, get in the car. Yes, sir. You know, this is strictly a volunteer job. You don't have to do it. I'm not ordering you to. But, sir, this was your suggestion. Suggestion? Well, that's what I mean. I, I only suggested it. So you really don't have to do it if you don't want to. You understand? Yeah, but, sir, why wouldn't I want to do it? Because the whole thing might backfire. It's dangerous. It... What am I talking about? It's dangerous. It's not dangerous. You don't have any choice. You got to do whatever I tell you. That, that, that's what you're programmed for, right? Yes, sir. It's all right, let's move it. Uh, yes, sir. All right, now listen, kid. Find out all you can about Wheeler, and in case you got any questions, you phone me. You got it? Uh, yes, sir, I'll phone you. Uh, you feel all right, kid? Uh, yes, sir, I'm just fine. Thank you, sir. Oh. Well, okay. This is it, huh? Cleaver, 5th Precinct. I brought back a lost lamb for you. Uh, good afternoon, sir. What's the charge? Oh, no, 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 he just got in with some bad company, and, well, they took him for everything he had, you know, money, an ID card, even his letters from home. <laughs> What's your outfit, sailor? Uh, security, sir. I'm with Chief Wheeler. I'm not an officer, sailor. You don't have to call me sir. I'm sorry, sir. I mean, oh, hell. <laughs> I'll call Wheeler. Ah, uh, well, uh, you see, that's, that's what I mean. Um, uh, the boy's a little late for muster, and uh, from what he tells me about this, Wheeler. Boy, that's one chief I'm glad I never had to serve under. I was a swabby myself, you know, for five years in the big one. And that's why I thought I'd bring him down here personally, you know, after I got off duty, because uh, give him a break. Because Wheeler will skin him alive. Well, listen, I can't disobey orders. I, I, one good turn deserves another. And sometimes you might uh, need a little something from a cop. You just look me up. Cleaver. <laughs> There you go, kid. You're on your way. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. First time he's been away on his own. I, I mean, away from home. <laughs>
around here. Uh, yes, ma'am, I am. Well, welcome aboard. What do you have? Coffee, please. Coffee it is. It's about time you got home, Cleaver. Uh, how, how, how nice to see you, both. <laughs> Where's Haven, Cleaver? Uh, sir? Cut the act, Cleaver. Tell us where Haven is. Where Haven is? Uh, uh, well, you mean, uh, he's not in the lab, sir? Haven is missing, Mr. Cleaver. Missing? Well, what could have happened to him? Cleaver, I don't know what your game is, but I'm issuing a direct order. Produce Haven. Are you accusing me of taking him? Well, who said anything about taking him? Uh, well, uh, uh, she said he was missing. Uh, didn't you say that, ma'am? Captain, may I make a suggestion? Assign Mr. Cleaver to find Haven. After all, who knows the boy better? Who has a better idea where Haven might have gone? Am I right, Mr. Cleaver? Yeah, I've got some good ideas on that, Captain. Cleaver. If... Captain, why don't we let Mr. Cleaver start working on his oh, ideas? Oh, you're pushing your luck, Cleaver. Please, Captain. If this is some more of your shenanigans. No, no shenanigans, sir. No shenanigans. And... Mr. Cleaver, Haven's energy cycle would have been totally exhausted by six this evening. He'll be vulnerable to severe damages. You see, I do believe in him, too. <laughs> Coffee. Yes, ma'am. You're kidding. Oh, no, ma'am, I never kid. He sat there for 20 whole minutes, never even touched his coffee. This is no refill, you know. Counts as a fresh cup. For Christ's sake, sir, you're talking like you're serving champagne. Put it on my bill. Coffee's on me, Sheriff. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, you're Chief Wheeler, aren't you? You know me? I know of you. They say you're a real tough old salt. Well, they're right. What's your name? Haven, sir. I'm a computer specialist. Haven, haven't you been in the service long enough to know that you don't call it chief, sir? Well, excuse me, sir, but my use of the word in your case is not for recognition of military rank, but rather as an article of respect for the person. You, sir. Oh, right. Carry on. Cindy. Give him some more coffee. He hasn't even touched what he's got. Tell me, why do you order coffee and not drink it? Actually, I'm trying to quit. Uh, this tests my willpower. I was sent over to reset the oscillator panels on your RL384-70 units. Now, that's how I knew about you, sir. For you, Chief. Wheeler here. Okay. Yeah, all right. I'll be right there. Haven, check out what you're supposed to. I'll see you later. I'll uh, need an entry permit, sir. I'll take care of it.
This is excellent coffee. Hi, I'm Haven. Oh, yes. Chief Wheeler called about you. It's about time they did something about those RL384 panels. What's going on? He followed me here. $2 million payroll heist. I can't believe you're using me as a patsy. You stupid fool. Where the hell do you think all the money to pay the prison people is coming from? And the FBI. And even the Cubans. Those people want hard cash before they let you in. And this helicopter. How do you think we're paying for this? And all the other expenses we've run up because of you. Ross, you tell him. He's telling you the truth, kid. There's no smoking in here. Why didn't you tell me this before? Cliff, you want out of this, just say so right now, and we'll cancel the whole operation. Well, I want an accounting of every cent. Now you're talking. And you're going to get more plastic. Ross, get him anything he wants. You say you want to do hospitals? You've got it. How much do you need? You serious? The hospitals? Absolutely. Well, I'll need at least 30... 50. 50 pounds. Uh, you hear that, Ross? He needs 50 pounds. You handle it. Right. You can pick it up at the base in the morning, huh? Okay? 50. Gosh, I... 50 pounds? Have you got any idea what we can do with 50 uh, good pounds? Good boy. Why don't we kill him now? That's brilliant, Ross. And whose body do they find at the base? Yours? How'd you get the pass? The Chief Wheeler's office gave it to me. Oh? Well, did you learn anything? Uh, considerable, sir, including the names, serial numbers, and specialties of 2,036 naval personnel. But what about Wheeler, kid? Wheeler? Uh, sir, the personnel data concerning Chief Wheeler that is stored in the main computer is quite routine and contains nothing we don't already know. However, I did plug myself into a subsidiary data bank and obtained what I evaluate as priority information. <sighs> well, what is it, kid? What is it? Well, thank you, sir. Uh, today, uh, Thursday, at 1,700 hours, $2 million is to be transferred from the base dispersing office to a Federal Reserve Bank. The only base personnel privy to this information are the dispersing officer and Chief Wheeler. $2 million, huh? Sure. That's what the diversion's for. That probability is 100%, sir. Yeah, but how are they going to do it? I'm sorry, sir. The information is not sufficient to answer that question. The only conceivable employment of atomic weapons is when... Huh? Hey, kid! 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 Is something wrong, sir? Yeah, there's something wrong. You running out of juice or something? Uh, negative, sir. All readings are normal. Well, something's wrong. Well, you may be correct, sir. Uh, while all readings are normal, they are lower normal, which is inimical to the expended energy cycle. But uh, whatever is malfunctioning is not indicated on my display. I'm sorry, sir. Listen, kid, can you hang on a little longer? I'll try, sir. You gotta, because you gotta go back in. You gotta find out more. Uh, yes, sir. Then I'm gonna find Skaggs, because I gotta make him do something about this. Navy Station Heights. Where do you dream this stuff up, Cleaver? Here's the real thing. Indez is not free. The Terminal Island Bridge will be destroyed at 5 p.m. today. You've been warned. But that's what I'm trying to tell you, Captain. The Navy Station's on the other side of the bridge. The, the bridge is just a diversion, sir. Diversion? Oh, that sounds like Haven. You got that from Haven, didn't you? Diversion? Yes, sir. I knew it. Now, you hear me, Cleaver, and hear me good, because I won't repeat it. You have one hour, one hour, to get Haven back to the land. After that, consider yourself on immediate suspension pending departmental investigation. Now, if you don't return him, I'm going to put out an APB and you'll be charged with grand theft. Now, get out! But, Captain, it's one hour. 
Get out. All right, what do you want? You look like you could use some help. Oh, what help? I don't need any help. No? I heard the captain yelling at you. I don't know what he was talking about, but I heard him mention Haven. I heard him mention their naval base. And I know it wasn't good. You put all that together, and it sounds like he could use some help. Yeah, the other day when I needed your help, you walked out. I didn't walk out on you. You oh. walked out. Now, what difference does it make who walked out on who? Now, where are we going? The kids at the Navy base. I got to get him out of there before he gets hurt. Well, let's go. Let's go! in six minutes, move off, fast. Just loosen one contact here, and then this whole chip comes out. Just hurry it up, Yancey. Well, knock the power off so I can work on this without frying myself, OK? Wheeler, truck's here. It can't be. You better tell them that. Okay, the main scanner is out. Well, what's the matter with you? The truck is early. So the truck is early, so big deal. This signal Bannock to come down now. I got another couple seconds here, and then I'm out of here. All right. <laughs>
You saved my life. Mr. Yancey, where is the bomb? You saved my life. You must be my friend. Our machine. The bomb, Mr. Yancey. Please, sir. Uh... There's a... a detonator on the... on the bridge. There's a green wire, a red wire, a blue wire. You must disconnect them in that order. order. over here. Please lift the machine off the ground, Mr. Bannock. Please do it, Mr. Bannock. Now. Come on, move it! Wheeler doesn't answer. Well, we're going in. <laughs> Mr. Vanek? That's over there in the junction box. Show me, please. There isn't any time. Show me. It's in there. Open it, please. Open it? With what? I don't have a key. I don't have any tools to handle that stuff. I don't know how to handle that stuff. Open it, please. Open it, please. Come on, let's get out of here. He was in with him from the beginning. What's the matter with him? Cleaver! Joe! Come back, Joe. It's too late. Come back! Cleaver, get back! 
back here. She's gonna blow! Kid! What's the matter, kid? What's the matter? Wires. Green first, then... Yeah, yeah. Green first, then what, kid? Then what color? Come on, kid. Red or blue? What, kid? Red? Blue? Red? Blue! You diffused it correctly, sir. You did okay, kid. Nice going. Nice. Hey. Hey, what's this? What? Hey, what's that watch you got there? It looks like a detonating device, sir. Well, come on, get it out of there. Uh, yes, sir. I feel much better now, sir. Well, just about time for a beer, huh? <laughs> Lever. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the deputy mayor has something to say to you men. Say something? How could anyone think of anything to say except, well done? We'll arrange a commendation for these uh, officers and for, especially for Mr. Uh... Uh, Officer Haven, sir. Right, Haven. Where do you find these gallant young men, Skaggs? Deserve a commendation yourself. Well, if you'll forgive me, sir, it's the captain who deserves all the commendation. Yes, sir, he was the one who figured out the bomber's whole scheme. And I must say, sir, that I was pretty skeptical when he ordered me to send young Haven here undercover into the Navy station. But the captain sure knows what he's doing, sir. Yes, sir. Loyalty. Loyalty. Refreshing to find it. You keep up the good work, man, all of you. Yeah. <laughs>